phone is vibrating. Ah, the noise. What time is it anyway? Yawning, I grab the phone over the side table. It's Sam. It's seven in the morning. Who would... Oh, it's Sam. Hello, Sam? Hello, Ina. Are you okay? Doing well? Huh? Um, yeah, I'm doing alright. I just woke up. Did I wake you up? Oh, no, no. I, I was just going to get up. Are you okay, Sam? Typical Sam behavior. He always has trouble voicing what's, what was on his mind. Yes, in a... I'm sorry about last night. I didn't mean to get angry. It's alright, Sam. Don't worry about it. It's quite okay, I understand. Okay. There is now enough cross silence that either of us is hesitant to break. I need to sleep now. I didn't get much sleep last night. Okay then, good night, Sam. Uh, morning. Good night. Typical Sam. He was probably brooding over it the entire night. And in his condition, I really need to watch myself around him as well. Well, time to get dressed. I have an appointment in a few hours. This is the place, right? Clear snack out. Okay then, Mal said he'd be a middle-aged man wearing a brown suit. Well, he wasn't a hard find. He sticks out like a sore thumb. Most of the patch on here seems to be rowdy teenagers. Seems to be eyeing me with interest. That's odd. Oh, probably not. Mom must have given him a description of me as well. I never got used to this part. I walk over to him cautiously. The man is standing next to an empty table. We, we stare at each other for a few seconds, both waiting for the other to speak first. This is ridiculous. This guy is obviously just wasting my time. Just as I open my mouth, he speaks in a loud, excited voice. Hello there, you must be Elena, right? Oh, she uses a different name. That's right. He sticks his, he sticks his hand out jovially, still grinning away. I stared at his hand for a second before slowly reaching out to shake it. I'm Ray Garland. Nice to meet you. Elena. Unfazed by my obvious distrust, he gestures towards the empty seats. Have a look around. You are at the far back and the place is very deserted. It should be okay. I saw him do a chair across from him. He looks like he's about to say something, but I don't give him a chance. So, first things first. His mouth closes and he leans forward to smile, returning to his face. Mr. Carlin, where did you hear about me? Ah, a friend of mine. This bloke named Mel, good lad. I'm taken aback for a moment. I just stare at him. Mel has friends? Never mind, that's not the point. Right, what did he tell you I do? Well, nothing. He just told me you were someone I could rely on. Someone who gets things done. And to be honest, I don't really care what you do. He gives a healthy laugh. I just gave it him and I was unsure of what to say. Most said I could trust you, so I trust you. He claps his hands and leans forward. Right then, let's talk business now, shall we? I feel like he's the one controlling the discussion, and I don't like it. But more importantly, the matter at hand is, do I take the job or not? I think my mind was already made up even before I came here. Alright then, let's talk about it. I'm sure Mal has already explained my payment policies to you. Sure, 50% upfront and 50% upon completion of the contract. It's all fair play. Right, okay, so tell me about this job. Mm. He notes that his expression undergoes an almost imperceptible change. He has a slightly more serious air about him now. 
here's the deal. I'm working on a big case right now. I'm trying to convince the drug lord Vasily Arakilov. Vasily Arakilov? Record on screen widens little. My reaction seems to please him. Yes, it's a huge break for me. Vasily Arakilov. Can you believe that? A witness has come forward. This witness will be a key element in taking down one of the most famous strugglers in this country's history. No, this changes nothing. This job is what I need right now. And you want me to? Mm, Alright, I seem to have snapped him out of his moment. Since this is a huge, very public case, even the press is involved. My daughter and I are being tailed. Oh. I'm starting to get a picture now. The burgers are just grasping the straws, looking for anything they can use to, to match my credibility. Now I'm sure they won't try anything. With a case this public, they'll be treating real carefully. There are no doubt. I should do as a precaution like you to look out for my little girl while she's at college. I'm not willing to rule out any possibilities. We're very close to beating the sneaky bastard. He might just get jumpy and do something reckless. He's looking at me questioningly. There are certainly risks involved, but I feel this is a necessary step for me. Yes, we're becoming a better person, Lena. Yes. Mm, so, yeah. Okay, I'll do it. I'll be on the lookout at the gulag from tomorrow morning. Karen claps his hands together. Great! That takes care of that then. Now I can focus solely on the case. He puts out his hand once more. I'm the rest reluctant this time. I take his hand and give it one shake as if to conclude the deal. Well, that's that then. I've got myself another job. A buy a slightly strange one. I wipe the stream from the car's window using the hem of my sleeve and then gaze out the window. Listening to the repetitive patterning of rain on the rover car, I admire a view. A grey world, appearing almost as if time itself were moving at a different pace out here. Earlier this morning, I drove out to the college. I stuck around it a couple of times looking for any other possible entry points. Not finding anything remarkable, I picked out a suitable local spot near the entrance and parked myself here. The girl was dropped off about an hour later in an impressive black vision. She goes to a prestigious college and she even has her own chauffeur. Even if it's the drug that we're talking about, it's highly unlikely she'll be attacked in school. Well, that just means my job here will be that much more easy. Opening the glove compartment, I take out footage to be the girl in it once again. Lillian Garland. Blonde hair, not very long. Green eyes, a well-shaped face. In the photo she has a carefree smile. She's very much the Dexpo image of a rich girl. I couldn't see her properly from my vantage point, but judging by the hair, this is fairly recent. I turn it over. Nothing here. Checking the car's lock, I realize I've only been here three hours. Clock! Lock! <laughs> Clock. Still four hours till school lets out. I return to studying this picture. Well, she's attractive, I'll give her that. I shoved the photo back in the glove compartment and returned to gaze out the window. Outside, the rain isn't showing any signs of letting up, leaving the college grounds very deserted, even during Caracas, which is now, I think. I can just barely make out the top of the building from here. I try to picture myself going to such a college. I wonder how it would have been. I've always been curious. The idea has a certain charm to it. I always did like reading. I barely ran the alphabet at the orphanage, but I had studied English practically on my own, devouring any book I could get my hands on. I shake my head to clear it of these idle musings. Focus. I'm not really used to such assignments, which is probably the cause for my restlessness. Still, it wasn't like I could stick out the skate the whole day. A person just sitting in her car for hours and hours on end would make anyone suspicious. I'm parked near cafe. Rectally, I step out my car and there under the awning of a store. I walk quickly towards the cafe, push open the door and step inside. 
The cafe is dimly lit, relying mainly on the light streaming in from the windows, which isn't much given the water. There is a distinct appetizing sun in the air. I pick a table with a window view of a college entrance and take a seat. I'm observing the world outside when I feel a present at the table. Hello, what will it be? Ah, it's the waitress. I clear my throat. Could I have a coffee, please? Certainly, just a moment. She didn't ask her what kind of coffee? Okay, but never mind. Well, maybe she just took it as espresso, I guess. She retreats as silently as she appeared. I continue my surveillance of a college while at the same time trying to appear as inconspicuous as possible. The rain finally seems to be letting up. Taking that as my cue, I leave my payment at the table and head back to the car. At the college, the classes have come to an end for a day. A very number of students have already flocked out of the school grounds. I scan the crowd of students coming out, searching for... Oh, she is kind of pretty. Neat, neat girl. It's her, the girl from a picture. She's chatting animatedly with her friends, waving her hands around as she explains something to them. She's smiling away as if she doesn't have a care in the world. Something about the scene strikes a child to me. I can't describe it, it's like I'm looking at something entirely new and different. I stand there, hand on the car whore handle, space out for what seems like a whole minute before realizing what I'm doing. Ah! I clamber in, hoping it wasn't noticed by too many people. What am I doing? I sigh and shut the door. Meanwhile, the black pigeon from this morning has arrived as well, although there seems to be some sort of a disagreement between her and the chauffeur. She's taking excitedly, casting Wally with her hands. In the end, the car simply tries a way, leaving the girl apologizing to her friends in an embarrassed manner. As the screw free sets off, I place a hand on the ignition key, ready to follow them. But I stop as I realize that the cars are only at the doors to cafes across the street. Hmm. I could wish her safely even from here. The cafe seems to be fairly crowded, it's only she should be in any danger there. Maybe I could still go in for a closer look. Oh, decisions time! Wait, can I save? Of course I can save. Um, I feel like I should be close to her. I feel weird that she didn't come inside the college somewhere, but I guess she could be thrown out, given that she's not a student. So I probably should go in for after them. In the end, I still decide to follow them. I wait for a group to pick their table before falling suit, because if something happens, it will take her a few minutes to get out of the car and to get to the cafe, and it won't be as discreet as she would like, and something really bad might happen in, in those few minutes, so that's why. I need to appear normal, it's just a casual customer, I am not sure I unnecessary attention to myself. Oh, hello again. What would you like to have? Well, so much for the line of food. It's the same waitress who served me the last time I was here. Ah, a coffee, please. She gives me a white smile, apparently completely upper job. Right away! Saying that, she throws back the counter to rely the order. The prices are a little steep here. What with there being a college like guy right across from it. I really should make a habit of this. <laughs> I could prepare something from home in the coming days. I show what to do next. I start playing with a menu, sneaking on casual clans in the car's direction. She and her friends seem to be ordering delicacies of every kind without a second thought. And here you are. Hmm? Your coffee. Careful, it's hot. The waitress back, she carefully sets the play on the table. And in the else? No, thanks. Okay then, let me know if you need anything. She's more friendly now. She hurries on, the, on to, the, to another table. 
I guess they have their service to show for their inflated prices. I watched the crop like this for a while, sipping my coffee. Lillian is laughing loudly right now. She seems to be so full of life. Ah, our eyes meet for a split second. Or at least I think they do. And she's packed the docky with her friends. I'm being exceptionally careless here. I turn back the many. The waitress keeps shooting me questioning looks, so I try to ignore her. I can't exactly hear what the crab is talking about, but judging by the mood, I'm fairly sure the scare had not heard a word about the case her father is involved in. Eventually, the girls get up and start collecting their things. I busy myself with a many as they pass by. I should probably avoid doing things like this in the future, although it gave me an interesting picture. They say their goodbyes and then the other girls go their own way. Lillian gazes after them for a moment before starting off towards her home. Since she apparently isn't being packed, picked up today, I wait for her to reach the end of the street before starting up my car. I follow her to her home and then head back. It was a long day. A very slow, long day. I could get used to this. It's boring and creates this restless feeling in me, but I needed a change of pace anyway. I pour myself a drink and sip it while it we browse the internet. I need to wash the dishes. I should get to that in a bit. Hmm. I feel myself nodding off while browsing through a seemingly endless jacket showcase on a website. Is it just me or do they all look the same? I really should just wash the dishes and call it a day. I have an early start tomorrow. I stretch and stand up. This room needs a vacuum as well, I'll do it tomorrow, I guess. After I'm done with the dishes, I retire to my room. Normally I read before going to sleep, but I'm too tired for that right now. I turn off the lights and get into bed. I didn't visit Sam today. Okay, I'll go see him tomorrow. Oh, I was bad that you didn't visit him.